Hey guys, welcome back to Diesel Iron. This is Rick talking about our skid steer today. Glad to have you guys back. So a lot of people talk about, man, when, when I'm buying a skid steer, I don't know what to buy. Um, let's get something that's really small, something that's really big, high flow, not high flow. Uh, you really need to look for something that fits your application. If you look at what we got here, guys, how to tell the difference between high flow and low flow. Um, a lot of machines right here, they will come with these three valves right here. This is going to be your low flow. Is again, you got a case strain here to run something with a smaller attachment that has some bypass. These are your low flows. They push in to release a lot of the hydraulic pressure. Um, this is low flow. You'll see sometimes they'll be over here on another machine. Um, some it, it really doesn't matter which side. It depends on the manufacturer. Um, sometimes you'll see a high flow mounted over here and a low flow over here, vice versa. Or you'll see a series of three that are angled up on um, some are vertical, some are horizontal. But you'll see three that are tilted up like on a Takahuchi and I think the deer are. Um, sometimes you'll see five. But this is your high flow system right here that's on top. What these are, these run off of a switch that's going to be in the cab on our machine. Right in here. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Right here's our right here's our button for high flow. Um, what it does is it kicks up your pumps. It produces more pressure. Uh, more, I guess, is you kind of want to think like torque for hydraulic. Um, these are standard low flows. These are high flows. High flows run roughly, I think this one's 34.9 gallons per minute. These down here, you know, they're, I think they're right around uh, 20 gallons per minute. You have to check your attachments, uh, what they require for. And these applications right here, 90, 90 to, yeah, probably about 90% of the skid steers just need low flow. A lot of guys get the high flow and they'll never use it. Um, they're for running like a mill or a, you know, asphalt mill or a forestry mulcher kind of thing. You're not going to see your typical contractor run high flow on it. We're very versatile, so we need the high flow. We don't use it all the time with our attachments, but this, this machine does have roughly about 500 hours, 600 hours with high flow running on it. Um, you got stump grinders that run off a of high flow too and a couple other attachments that I'm drawing a blank to right this second. But even like our stump grinder runs high flow, we actually don't turn the pumps on and kick it up and run it in high flow because what happens is it's such a small unit, it won't displace the heat and the hydraulics start heating up. You actually could feel the heat come back into the cab when you're running that um, stump grinder and then the alarm will kick on every once in a while while because you're starting to pretty much boil your hydraulic fluid which isn't <laughs> which isn't good you're losing the velocity and the capacity of what's happening um our mulcher head we run to high flow all the time even then negative temps up here we've run in negative 18 20 degree temps we've done some mulching jobs for it. i actually like it um you got to obviously turn the uh hydraulics on obviously with the high flow first you don't turn that on first you turn that on once the hydraulics get a little bit warmed up and we'll let that force your head idle with the pumps on start moving that hydraulic system to start heating it up in the winter and then once it gets up to temps starts climbing in the cab you'll turn that high flow on and you'll actually you'll run the hydraulics uh, a lot higher and that's when it'll start getting into like 34.9 or 42 depending on how many gallons a minute your machine set up for but most of our stuff we run just a low flow your grapples your uh augers your grapple forks uh, we have a tree shear that we run off of we got a um, sr3 that we run the attachment itself we got a power broom all that stuff could run right here off of this low flow attachments you you really just got to pay attention what you're going to do and what kind of applications if you do want high flow you want to buy a machine with a high flow already set up on it because adding it to a machine is ridiculous expensive man i can't even remember the price point and i'm afraid to even rattle it off but 
I think trying to add high flow is twenty to thirty thousand, something ridiculously stupid. And you could get it installed at the factory level for I think like ten grand, for example, if you bought a machine new. There's a lot of good used machines out there that you could look at and get low flow and high flow, but that's kind of how you tell the difference. Um great to have great applications for everything that's going on with everything that you got with all your attachments so this case strain is real important um so a lot of our high flows run right here and then we need this case return line sometimes these fittings will be backwards on your machine or they'll be backwards on the attachments and you got to do your due diligence and kind of marry it up because a lot of the attachments um they come for a different kind of machine or something that they were already running on so you got to flip these around not a big deal here's our 14 pin port right here um some i think cats like a seven we're at a 14. you can find connectors that will run from there into the attachments you just got to marry it up bobcat's a little bit different um we can run some bobcat att attachments but they're starting to go to this coupling system and the hydraulic systems into the plate here and it's actually really sweet where you don't have to jump in and out all the time and plug in all these hoses and have all these extra lines but that's what we got going on here um that's pretty much the highlight guys we're going to get into the filters and how to identify everything else we'll catch you here guys in a couple minutes thank you